Hey everybody, it's Jeff, and uh, here's a recap of what I did today on Workbench, um, a stream where I work on my open source innovation projects. So I've been planning to do this one for a while. It's a proof of concept for a front-end web framework in Go that feels like Vue.js and uses WebAssembly. Um, my intention here is not because I just have just have to write Go, but because I really just want to skip all the bullshit involved in a modern JavaScript application stack, right? I want hot reloading, I want components, um, but I don't want a project that has 100 dependencies, the Webpack rat nest, and all that. Plus, uh, then Go projects that need a simple little front end can just be written in Go, um, you know, and be compiled to, to WebAssembly and then you know, it's like the rest of the project. So I've looked into this thing before, um, thinking about like a React-like framework. And it turns out um, that sort of thing does exist. Um, so this is Vecti, which is a React-like framework um, in Go, based on Gopher.js. Um, and the thing is, Gopher.js is built around an API that is actually um, nearly replaceable with the syscall JS uh, API that you get when you compile the WebAssembly. Um, but swapping out that API doesn't work just yet um, in an out-of-the-box way. And it turns out I, I don't really like what React looks like in Go. So, um, you know, part of it is uh, not having JSX because you end up having to do this kind of like function style DSL. Um, and, you know, once I see, you know, if statements re-implemented in this in Go, where you have if statements, I f it just doesn't feel right. Um, it just feels really verbose and just like not, it just doesn't feel right. Um, so I'd rather it just be a template. Um, and so this, you know, made me thinking, start thinking about uh, Vue.js, which is, you know, a React-like alternative that gives you components and stuff, but also is built on top of this powerful view instance primitive that's, you know, a little bit simpler than uh, than a component, but can become a component. Um, and the way you create a view uh, instance like this actually feels a lot like you would create like a new struct in Go. So it seemed like maybe it would feel better doing this API instead of uh, React. So then it also has this template uh, syntax uh, with these directives built into attributes and stuff like that. And I always loved that kind of um, template engine. And so last week um, I put together a simple proof of concept um, that took a template like that. It, it's not quite the same thing, but it has the same primitives and I'm taking some shortcuts, but you know, you can do interpolation using Go uh, template stuff. You can do attribute binding. Um, you can do if statements. And you can even do for loops. And in this nonsense thing here, I give it some data. Um, and I can run it, and it generates this HTML. Um, so unlike Vue, it, 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 it renders HTML instead of building out the DOM, but that's something that could probably be swapped out if, if we wanted to go that way. But um, if nothing else, it just might be nice to have a Vue.js style template engine in Go. That seems like it would be cool. So I also did some uh, WebAssembly prototypes uh, previously, mostly just trying to make sure that I could compile like a Hello World and see how that worked. And it's super easy, uh, you know, you have kind of comes with some interesting uh, boilerplate stuff around it um, that I don't fully know what what all it's used for. Um, but I'm working within that framework. And then I also, the server that uh, serves these things up, um, uh, I turned into a watcher. So it'll actually recompile uh, the WebAssembly when there's changes to the, to the Go program. So this way I get that kind of like fast iteration. I can just have the page open and edit some Go and see the um, page reload uh, with the new stuff. And it's 
Um, it takes a while for the WebAssembly binary to load every time, um, but otherwise it's it's pretty fast. Um, like it's at least on par to like hot module reloading with React, and there's like none of that. Uh, you know, it's just compiling a Go binary, and then the web server is just like reloading the page. So then I uh, basically organize those two things um, and the template stuff into something where we have like a view instance type thing um, and made it so that we could have a create, create a little instance here in Go and we call mount and that uses the, uh, the API to basically, um, for some reason I can't get it to uh, invoke the uh, query selector to actually like let you define a query selector here. Um, so it's just hard coded to replacing the body. And again, it's it just has the HTML, so it's just replacing inner HTML. Um, but for now, it's kind of like a good enough for this proof of concept. Um, but uh, if you want to see it work, we can run run this WASM server. And here it is. We have this button on click uh, it calls greet we have a greet button and then it says here's your number and then there's a number uh, based on counter here's our data this counter starts at four i'm going to click greet it sets counter uh, increments counter um, needs to do a type assertion because there's it's uh, based on an empty interface and we just call mount um, again which will basically re-render uh, it and so Obviously, there's no like reactivity or anything with this um, uh, state yet, but um, this was a kind of good shortcut. And the end result is we have a number, and we hit greet, and we can increment the number. And it feels like a, a you know a view JS application or something like that, but it's written in Go, and this is happening with Go code. So that's really cool. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of shortcuts here, um, but I'm trying to see how far I can get and see how it feels. Um, at some point I might start over and build it right, um, if it, if it makes sense to actually build this sort of thing. I feel like it might, but that would include all kinds of stuff like, um, actually being able to include some JavaScript in your template, um, because we can, we can run JavaScript and Go. And in the case of these templates where it's just like doing some like string parsing or something. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of, of, of uh, JavaScript in here, maybe even a combination of both being able to define JavaScript functions and, and filters or whatever and Go ones would be kind of cool and be able to use that in the template system. And then obviously a better version of, of this, which has some kind of like data reactivity and um, I thought it would be kind of nice to if we could you know I have this hot module reload kind of idea where instead of doing module reloading we just recompile the whole thing and reload the the um, the WebAssembly instance um, and of course you'd lose all your state but what if all state was held in JavaScript in the browser and then the WebAssembly could reload and be this kind of like stateless thing that accesses the state out here and all the code uh, works on it that that could be an interesting way to go anyway that's it uh, let me know what you think or if you have any questions uh, leave a comment um, subscribe if you'd like to keep following along um, or follow me on twitch so uh, Thanks for thanks for watching.